सो लेट स्टार्ट अवर स्टडीज ऑफ क्लासिकल मैकेनिक्स फ्रॉम द चैप्टर नंबर वन विच इज सर्वे ऑफ एलिमेंट्री प्रिंसिपल्स सो इफ यू हैव अ सिचुएशन इन फिजिक्स दैट यू हैव टू एनालाइज देन वॉट यू डू फर्स्ट यू फर्स्ट डिफाइन अ रेफरेंस फ्रेम यू डिफाइन अ रेफरेंस फ्रेम एंड देन यू वर्क आउट ऑल यूर कैलकुलेशन टू सॉल्व दैट प्रॉब्लम इन दैट पर्टिक्युलर रेफरेंस फ्रेम For example, if there is a particle which moves only in one dimensions like this, then this number line will be my reference frame because with this here I can define certain origin and I can define uh, the position of this particular particle by x coordinate. So it is suppose zero here, so it is negative uh, two meter. here and it will take positive values in right direction and negative values in um left direction so this is a example of simplest reference frame now you may have two dimensional reference frame also for example like this so this is x coordinate and this is y coordinate this is your two dimensional reference frame where position will be given by this x coordinate here and this y coordinate here y dash and x dash suppose and this is your position x y and this in general is given by this vector let's say this is origin this vector like this so this vector also known as r bar is a position vector of that particle because it joins the origin and the position of that particle so it is a position vector now consider three dimensional case for example if i have this three dimensional reference frame let's say my axis are x over here y over here and z over here and there is a particle that is inside the 3d space over here and i have to know what the particle position is so then i have to draw a position vector so let's say this is origin so the position vector will be given by this um this green color vector and this will be called as r bar so this r bar is the position vector of that particular particle now the position vector can change with respect to time that means dr bar by dt can be a non zero quantity and this quantity is known as velocity so since it is a vector quantity we will have dr bar by dt over right side now we know that the momentum is given like this p bar is equal to mv bar where m is the mass of that particular particle and p is a uh, v is the velocity and the momentum's direction is the direction of the velocity itself now the newton's second law says that newton's second law says that if there is a net external force acting on this system then it is given as f bar is equal to dp bar by dt so the rate of change of linear momentum is defined as the force so here i will write the linear momentum which is mv bar instead of p bar so this becomes m dv bar by dt now i am assuming here that the mass is constant with respect to time mass is not changing with respect to time and for most of the cases it is the uh, reality that the mass is not changing but it is not always for example in rocket motion but for our purposes we will consider the mass as a constant thing so it will be m dv bar by dt and this is equal to force now what is dv bar by dt dv bar by dt is equal to acceleration so acceleration mass times acceleration is equal to force so you get this formula 
now acceleration is dv bar by dt then a bar is equal to d by dt into v bar is dr bar by dt this is equal to d2 r bar by dt2 so it is second order differential equation and this is the acceleration if you know this and if you can solve this with a certain initial conditions then you will get the solutions that you want for example suppose if i have a wage like this this wage is there and on this wage there is a small mass which is kept um, let's say this mass is there and let's say it is placed on a certain table or some surface assume that the surfaces the surface between this small mass m and the capital mass m is frictionless surface so there is no frictions frictional force experienced by this block now first thing what that we have to do is draw a free body diagram and display all the forces which are acting on this small block m now here i will draw it let me draw it here only so let me use a different color which is white so here it is down let me erase this m i will write it here and this is 90 degree now this component this mg this is mg okay i will resolve it in the components so this is angle theta suppose if this is angle theta then this angle will also be theta why because if i extend this line over here like this then this angle will be 90 minus theta but this whole angle is 90 so this will be angle theta so this component becomes mg cos theta and this becomes mg sin theta now as soon as i write the components i will erase this mg now there is a normal force also acting like this which is n yes so now balance this n is equal to mg cos theta we have got n is equal to mg cos theta now what is the force which is in the direction parallel to the surface of the wedge this force is not balanced because there is no frictional force or any other force which is acting in this direction so it is unbalanced force and hence there this force is the external force which we will equate to ma which is this ma so we will equate it to this so mg sin theta is equal to ma so i can cancel this m and i can get the acceleration to be g sin theta so this is one of the simple problems in mechanics where you want to find the acceleration and given the appropriate initial conditions you can find the position of that block with respect to time at certain after some interval of time or whatever so you can solve this so now since we have defined what is momentum we can also define the conservation law of momentum so conservation theorem that i will talk about the conservation theorem is about conservation of linear momentum so conservation theorem of linear momentum this states that if there is no external force that is external force is zero then the momentum the linear momentum p bar is conserved that is it is constant it won't change that is p bar dot is equal to zero there is no external force that means p bar is equal to constant so it is conserved 